Oh, there it went. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Sage. Uh, it's this is the first time. I mean, we have worked together, and I'll use that loosely. We've worked together for quite a while now, but it's the first time we've been together on live video. Hello. Good morning. It is. No, that's the Good morning that's across that. the pond. <laughs> that's the that's the first thing it's very early in the morning where you are and mid-afternoon where i am so uh, it's great that we can get together and uh, i love live video now uh to anybody who's watching us live if you have a comment uh you can make the comment on facebook we'll see it here on smile time and sage and i will respond and uh, we can't see who's watching and but if you say hello we'll know that you're there I'm just making sure the live feed is there and it's public. Now that's good because I just did a short rehearsal and it was private and only I could see it. Right, now our topic today is education. Now we've got systems both sides of uh, the pond and your system is actually overseen by, who's, what's the situation at the moment? Um, well, we have systems where um, education um, primarily and written into our state constitutions and our and our national constitution is actually a local supposed to be locally controlled state controlled and then locally controlled. And that's how it's written. Um, however, um, there's a lot of federal money that is funneled to the states um, and anytime there's federal money involved you know there's going to be some sort of strings attached mm -hmm. um, to that money and so if we want to get that money we're going to have to meet certain standards or guidelines or follow some sort of rules to get that money and Honestly, um, the money that is given from the feds is really given to even things out so that schools that are in poor areas um, have lots of students with English of uh, English students of other languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, th those those sorts of things. Uh, needing of lots of technology that are falling behind in those areas, um, title money, title nine money to, to even out um, uh, girls, uh, sports, girls uh, activities, um, uh, those, those, those sorts of things. <clears throat> Real rural districts um, that are out kind of in the middle of nowhere versus your urban districts who, that that are are sort of it, it's just so very vastly different so just to even things even the score a little bit yep. that's really what most of the federal money is about that's why you hear a lot in the united states about oh the first thing we're going to do is abolish certain um departments and the department of ed is always one of those things that's on the chopping block um, because they say that we don't need it but those federal funds um it are, are 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 funds that um i can't imagine schools in rural districts and school in poor poor districts not having that money um and i used to work for the Department of Ed within my state. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was responsible for was working with my local region in the state, which is, um, I have the northwest corner of the state of Arkansas, which um, is a very rural state right in the middle of the country. It's a very red state. Mm -hmm. um, and they are very, uh, I, I mean, we're very lucky. We probably have more money than most because we're the home of Walmart. We're the home of Tyson. Yep. We're the home of J.B. Hunt Trucking. We're the home of some other companies that fall probably within the fortune, maybe thousand, fifteen hundred. Yep. Um, we have we have some really top co uh, companies that you know, make it so that we have enough executives here that there's 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 some there's some money here. So but um, overall, we're, we're 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 still considered a 
fairly high poverty. We have a huge um, um, English as a second language or, or yes. other language uh, population. Um, so we really do get a lot of those federal funds. So I was really responsible for helping the schools um, write that money into their school improvement plans and figure out how it was best for them to spend that money. And so I know how vastly important that money is. Um, and it's different in rural districts where the poverty is different. The poverty is, um, it's just different. And so our new secretary of education comes to mind next. She was. Right. Okay. Now we've been watching from, from the UK. Uh, you actually, or she's appointed <laughs> by, by the president. And uh, well, the position is appointed by the president and, uh, this is the person who is responsible for the way in which education is going to be run statewide. Nationally, on a national level. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay. We're, we're hoping she doesn't have too much. Since since education in the United States is really a locally run um, and it's written that way, um, we're hoping that, you know, all strings attached to the money. Um, she is very for private privatization of schools, right? For vouchers to schools, she absolutely wants to stomp all over public education, which scares the bejesus out of yeah, every yeah. single public school employee in the country because we think we're doing a pretty good job. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. since retired. Um, I'm no longer doing public education um, for a vast number of reasons, but um, uh, mostly because I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just a stay at home um, uh, caregiver and, and mother yes, at yes. this point um, in my life. Um, but I had a, a, a wonderful career for 20 years in, in the public public system as a teacher and then at the Department of Ed. And then I did federal programs for a very large district here locally. Um, so we're hoping in what we hope is a short administration um, that she won't be able to have too much damage. Um, they actually. Uh, we actually thought that there were there were a few people who flipped and um, went against her nomination from the other side. And we there were a lot of people. And I, I'm not afraid to say that I'm one of those people. Anybody who follows me on Facebook knows that, you know, I'm definitely not a, a fan of this administration. And I was completely taken aback, shocked. Um, went into kind of an underground mourning period there at the election. Um, and uh, in the last, what, 12, 14 days, um, I'm, I think I'm as shocked as, as a lot of other people because I think we all thought it might be bad, but I don't know that any of us thought it could be this bad. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, um, what, what, watching from, 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 from the UK, we see a situation which uh, is difficult to say the least, um, because we, we have, although we have uh, a government, I, I, we have a sort of ethos here that uh, we're here to help people. And that's, that's the way that it goes. I mean, our, our education is funded uh, by the state and each school is given a per capita sum to run the school and that comes from central funds and uh, there is back topped up by local but uh, to it's non-governmental apart from the fact that as you just mentioned uh, the government decides what sort of schools are going to be now we've got public schools like you have uh, which are funded by the government. And then we've got private schools, which are, are funded by fees. And they also receive some money. I don't know how much, but they do receive money. Uh, and then, you know, that's that's our situation. But the the government sets the tone, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It, it does set the tone. 
and, um, and 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 it sounds very similar to what we have, except I do think that the states, the actual states here, pay for the majority of the schools. We right. get we get topped off by the federal government. We're just hoping that our new secretary of education nationally doesn't. Um, she, she wants to set the tone. Um, she has more experience um, in. Uh, in, in inner city schools. She doesn't right. really have the experience or the know of schools here in places like Northwest Arkansas, which are in the top 500 in the nation. Um, we have brilliant schools here. Our students are provided with some of the finest edu public education that you can get in the country, um, which is fantastic. Our mm. kids are provided really with every opportunity to be the very best they can be. And that's phenomenal. That's what you want. Um, it is. I got a fabulous education here and I went on to the university here and mm. I got an undergraduate degree, a couple of graduate degrees. Um, and then I also had opportunity to leave the state and get some other opportunities elsewhere, but um, mostly I was educated here locally. Um, and I came from a very poor background. My family had no money. Um, I had to fund it myself. I and fund it on grants and, and, and loans and scholar, a little bit of scholarship money in the beginning. Um, not much. Um, I, you know, cause I was an average student coming out of mm -hmm. high school. I wasn't, uh, I, because I was, I was busy. I was president of this and vice president of that and secretary of this. And, you know, I was, I was busy in high school, you know, I was involved. Plus by the time I was a senior, I, uh, worked half a day, um, you know, and I think those kinds of opportunities were available. Now our, 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 our curriculum is so rigorous and they really, thought that, you know, kids getting off a half a day by the time they were seniors was crazy and they put more coursework in and it's it's hard. It's very rigorous. And as I have a senior right now and boy, getting him through is like, you know, I feel like I just have to, <laughs> yeah, you know, I know, with a rope. Um, but he's got great grades and he's getting great yeah. scholarships and um, some of them are four year scholarships already. Um, they're small. Um, they're not going to pay for everything, but you add two or three of them together and, and it's definitely going to help. Um, pull him along and and uh, um, if, if he if he stays in a state school and he keeps his grades to a uh, pretty pretty decent um, he'll he'll do he'll do just fine um, so uh, um, we're hoping that her tone which her tone is she believes in vouchers she believes in privatizing education she does not believe it, uh, she really has issue with public schools and coming from inner cities where she sees schools that are not performing well yeah. you can understand her view but she has zero experience she has no degrees in education she has no background in knowing what it's like in schools that do succeed she has not experienced anything else she's from detroit she's she just doesn't have and she's done lots of volunteer work and she's given lots of money because she's another one of trump's billionaires um on on his um uh, cabinet. Um, uh, and, you know, when you fill your when you surround yourself by nothing but people just like you and billionaires and, and all of that, you have a very small vision. You mm. can't see, you know, it was really the rural states who elected him and um, he has no vision of what the people from rural states really um, live. Um, a state like Arkansas, who has so much poverty in so, some parts and then has this this one part of the state where I live that 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 lives a, a fairly, you know, um, middle class life. Um, and he has just no vision of what what that looks like. So and we just hope, we just hope the tone is going to be OK. I'm, I'm with you on that. We've got a, a situation in our country where. Uh, 
Um, one of the things the things that happens is that people meddle in it something that's working. They yeah. change, edu right. change education for change's sake. And it doesn't necessarily work out for the better, does it? Mm -mm. It needs to be, you know, we're really hoping that, you know, I, I, I sort of made a comment. I, I have a friend, I get, I guess I, I'd say friend that um, he's, he was he's he, he was really sort of after me because I was so against her nomination and um, he really and I said look it's a slap in the face of all public educators for her to just blatantly say I'm for vouchers um, I'm for guns in it guns in public schools I'm for you know all of these things without saying you know there are lots of great programs out there that ha that are being tried that work some really neat programs that are in New York City that are in Atlanta um, that are you know around the country that have been just amazingly worked but they've been because there's been one visionary who've gotten a group of people together who have um, worked and worked and worked and worked. They've been tireless leaders mm -hmm. that have pulled these people together, that have put in endless, endless, endless hours. They have beat the streets for resources, um, but their programs have really taken off. We have one, we have a charter school here that's a national success. Um, yep. It's it's unbelievable their success story. Um, I, I'm still to this moment shocked at, at 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 their national ranking and and all of that. But it's a math and science school. Um, mm -hmm. My child didn't have. I mean, there was no way I could go and say, hey, let's let's try to enroll my 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 kid here because he doesn't do well in math and science, um, which is fine because the local the local. Uh, um, high schools here are all in the top 500 right. yep. schools in the country. So, um, you know, don't, don't kick what's working. Um, and if there are great thing, great programs, let's try anything anybody wants to try, but you've got to have a visionary leader who's willing to put in those kinds of hours, who's willing to find a support group of staff who has the same passion and vision that you do um, that's going to make it work. Um, and that's really, really hard to do. Um, uh, I agree. And, and, and I, and I hate to see anything happen to the great public schools that are working all around the country and all the hard work that our public school educators put in. Indeed. Indeed. We've got the same situation in the UK that the teachers are working very hard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes are let down by the infrastructure and uh, the people who should be doing the right thing don't necessarily do so. I just like to take a moment and say hello to uh, David and to uh, Alfredo. Thank you for joining us. Thank if you, guys. Like if you'd like to come on air and, and talk about education, uh, and more than welcome to do so. If you say yes. If you're watching live on Facebook, uh, then you can comment. And you can get involved, and uh, Sage and I were willing to answer your questions um, about education. And uh, sorry, yep. I thought David, you were say David, on your avatar, um, I've I've noticed that sometimes they don't they don't if you've changed your profile picture lately, they don't switch. Very, as fast as you change your profile. I change my profile a lot, so it doesn't switch over as quickly as you do. Um, there's Holland is just pop. Somebody, somebody there from Holland has just popped in. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like, I'd love to know what's going on in Holland with education. Um, I think that something you said earlier, Stephen, you guys have a lot of, of, um, parents and community people who are involved in your schools oh, that that's that's true the, the structure of each school is that it's run by the head teacher uh, but they are supported by a board of governors and that board of governors is made up of people appointed by the county or the state and people appointed by the local town but also by parents 
wow. and parents can volunteer to be part of the governing body of the school um, and it, it, it works because you're bringing experience at all different levels and the parents actually have a say in the running of school. Uh, I mean, I was I was fortunate to be chair of governors uh, for two years and uh, to sort of help the head teacher at that time to, to run the school because each school gets a budget and they get penalized if they go above the budget. And it's fair to say that the budget doesn't meet their needs. So uh, there's a lot of juggling goes on, a lot of juggling goes on. And it's good to know that, that Peter Peter is back with it. Oh, right. OK. Hey, and Alfredo is in California. We're going global. Oh, all right. We're global. Gosh, uh, Alfredo good. in California. It is early in California. Good oh, morning. yes. Definitely good morning. Um, because that's that's eight hours behind the UK as far as I know and it's nine hours behind Cornelis in in Holland it's a little before seven there all right okay right okay and Cornelis is making a, a comment which I'll read out and then we can discuss uh, the education in Holland is all state provided parents do participate with reading classes and days out so uh Situation and parent home. participation is so important. It's something that, you know, when we, when any kind of school improvement structure that we've ever put together, any kind of model that's ever been put together, and anybody's ever been in education or worked with education long enough knows that whatever's gone around has come around, has come back around, um, it gets thrown out, but it, it always kind of comes around. I am a parent member of Parent Board. We advise for four, time, four times a year. Um, which is a lot less than you guys being there pretty much every day, right, Stephen? Were you guys there pretty oh, much every no, day? No, no, no we, we, sorry, I may have missed, you may have misunderstood. Um, because we were there as volunteers, we, we met when the head teacher needed us, but definitely once a month. Oh, once a month. And, and once a month is great. I, I remember that, um, you know, parent, parent volunteers, something that parents involved is something that we always wrote into our plan, into school improvement plans and into, into the things that we wanted. Um, when I was a young and energetic middle school teacher, um, <laughs> I I, uh, I put together a plan for just our team and I organized the parent volunteers and I had 40 man hours a week volunteering on our team and they wow. were coming in and running all of our copies. We never ran any copies. We never hung anything up on the wall or outside or any of that kind of stuff. Parents did all that stuff for us. They tutored um, all of those things and it was great. Uh, it was fabulous, and and but and we always had a board. We always had boards that that advised for the schools and those sorts of things. And I, and you can't live without it. And um, I, I actually sort of served um, on one recently for uh, my local district. Um, I, I advised um, that they would send out questions, and and I I sent back in the answers to my committee. Uh, because it's it's a little bit hard for me sometimes to get away in the evening. Um, yeah. uh, I, I have so. caregiving that I do, and in the evening it's really really hard for me to get away. Sometimes I can get away during the day a little bit, but not in the evening is is easily. Um, uh, just because of Stephen, you're kind of a little bit more aware of my my situation, but yes. uh, I, when you're a caregiver and, and someone. Some someone needs you. It, it I, I told, and they, they they knew it, but they also knew my expertise, and um, and they felt like it was sort of worth it to go ahead and just send the questions and let me answer them, um, and then I'd send them back, and they took whatever they wanted to, and they threw out whatever they wanted to, and that was fine with me. Um, I think it's just so important to have parents involved in any way that you can get them involved, and so that's awesome. Um, who was from? Uh, uh, well, Cornelis is saying from Holland is saying that uh, uh, advice about child safety, child personal growth, child health care. Besides that, we are active with the Eastern, the Christmas cel uh, Christmas and the Eastern celebrations. Okay, uh, well that's, that's right. uh, but okay. that's a yeah. lot. I mean, child safety. Anybody got any thoughts out there on on uh, guns in schools? Guns on 
I have. Please. I mean, from from the UK point of view, uh, we don't have well, we don't have guns. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, there are no guns in schools, so no guns on uh, university campuses, and and we we don't have that problem because we had a situation uh, in Dunblane where there was a school shooting um, and it was a one school bizarre. shooting mm. that's the last time that's, the, that's over 20 years ago and that's the last time there was anything um well, in fact Cornelius is confirming um that uh i'm just waiting for that to come up california you got anything to say just a minute that's uh, we've got all ah, right okay there was a delay there. There are no guns at all throughout Europe. Um, certainly in, in, well, in general life, um, they're all licensed. Why guns. would you need guns to be in schools? Good question. Yeah, okay. that's from, from David. I think it, it's obviously. Um, Scotland has just introduced air rifle licenses. Right. But that's the, for the general population. Not, we don't have because we, we don't have any more. And my fingers are definitely crossed. Should be uh, with law enforcement only has drills with the children do with an active shooter scenarios. Well, that's nice. Wish we had that. So you let's, let's just clarify the position. What is the position on guns in schools? Well, it's different in every state and it's different in every area, actually. But right now in our state, we yes. have a legislator that is pushing guns on campus and he wants guns in the hands of of our faculty. And um, and 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 in some cases, even the students. And um, there's a law that says you can't have a concealed weapon if you're intoxicated. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine a campus where there's never going to be an intoxicated student. Um, I just don't I just don't see how this is going to be a good thing. I don't feel very safe sending my child to a school where there's going to be guns on campus. The universities have been outraged. They don't want it. Um, it, it's very, very concerning. We have so many school shootings. We have so many incidents. I mean, and there's almost a, sometimes there's an incident a day that just it just there's a string of them that just go for weeks wow. and then we'll have a break. Um, I, I, you wonder if there's a you know, if it's a pull from the moon, but there's just too many guns already on the streets. And it's not just in inner cities. You know, I mean, we have horrible situations in places like Chicago and Detroit and other places like that. It's, you know, I mean, Chicago is just a disaster with the guns. But, um, you know, um, I, I, I absolutely in a place like Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we have zero, zero, absolutely zero problems with school shootings. We have yep. zero problems with any of that. I do not see why in the world we would have somebody pushing to have guns on campus. We just do not have that kind of violence here. Um, why introduce it? Um, it's it's disheartening. Yeah. We would like yeah. to leave it in the hands of the law enforcement. We have great law enforcement. So far, we haven't had even any um, shootings by law enforcement uh, against mm -hmm. unarmed um, people. Um, but we do have a and we have a large minority population, more Hispanic than than African-American. But on our campus, we have a large African-American population. We're still cons we're part of the SEC uh, uh, with sports. So we're considered mm -hmm. south. We have, you know, all of our um, sports teams are are, are uh, strongly African-American. Um, I do not see the need to have guns on campus and yeah. uh, we're disheartened. Um, 
but the public here, I mean, we're a gun state. I mean, you know, the people here want their guns, uh, but boy, they sure get mad when anybody marches around the courthouse. Uh, you march around the courthouse with signs and people just freak out. You know, so no first, no, no, no right to assemble, but don't take away my guns. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's a situation which is, is foreign to the UK and to your, our police don't carry guns. Uh, apart from the special forces, uh, the police oh, are not police armed. police don't even carry guns. So well, police don't know. carry guns because ba basically they, they are armed with tasers. That's their most uh, potent weapon is a taser. Something um, logical. Yeah, well, it, it, I mean, our cultures grow and, and we, things become the norm and uh, it's, well, I don't know. I would agree with you on being uh, no guns in schools and I hope uh, that it doesn't come to pass. Right, are there any questions from anybody? Uh, thank you for, for joining us and thank you for the comments you've made so far because we've been able to cover a wide range of, of topics uh, on education. I think the most important thing is that, you know, our money from the feds um, is money that's supposed to even out things um, yeah. for poor kids, um, English of other students, uh, English students of other languages, which I was certified um, to teach those students when I when I was a teacher mm -hmm. and when I was an administrator to help um, bring that to other teachers um, and but more importantly I learned how to uh, bring that federal money to our schools and help our schools. Uh, just a, a comment from Debbie we'll right, of course go back right. to what was available when the second amendment was written. I know I know they, 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 they skip over the first amendment and just go right on to the second amendment. Um, David was explaining that everybody should, it should be just muskets, I think. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, and and uh, but that money is so valuably important to. Um, now I have. I remember when No Child Left Behind um, was written as a law yeah. at George Bush, and there were some people so angry about that law. And let me tell you, the standards behind that law were virtually impossible once your schools had reached a certain level of success. When your schools were reaching 88, 89, 90% success, where are you supposed to go from there? Every child is not gonna reach proficiency because in this country, we educate everyone. We don't yes. just yeah. educate, you know, the pick of the litter like some countries don't don't educate everyone they don't educate your special ed kids you don't educate um kids who can't learn you don't educate students of other languages you not every country does that we educate everyone here and so there were certain states that are actually that actually had enough money and they were small enough states that they opted out of No Child Left Behind funds. Uh, I want to say it was either New Hampshire or Vermont, and please, I hate to be lumped in with those people who say, oh, one of those New England states. It's not, I really don't mean it that way, but it was, I think, New Hampshire or Vermont. I can't remember. Um, and because uh, I know they always say, oh, one of those, you're one of those southern states. Um, when they talk about us, I, I know. Um, and, uh, but Arkansas is not one of those states that could ever afford to say, uh, sorry, we'll just opt out of your no child left behind money. Um, we received way too much of that funding because we're a poor state. Um, and, uh, you know, so whatever string came with it, we had to adhere to it um, and uh, it was hard. It was hard implementing it. And I came I came on to the State Department, I, I want to say maybe nine months before that hat hit. Um, and it was maybe not even that long. Yeah, about that, about that long. It, it, it was hard 
It's hard to implement mm -hmm. it. It was hard to get it rolled out. Hard to help the schools understand it because, you know, in you can say in some of the rules, rural areas, really rural areas, you were dealing with even administrators and teachers who, you know, they're educated, but right. Not, okay, it's a level of education. But you're still dealing with, you know, really rural people, and and so you know, even your educators weren't. I mean, but most of my area was extreme. I mean their level of education and their le level of sophistication was extremely high. And so I had to be, you know, I had to be at the top of the game. I, you know, whatever they knew, I had to know it and I had to know it better than they knew it. And it, I had to be on top of it. It was hard all the time. They were always challenging me. So I always had to be really on it. And it was, it was something hard to roll out. And Obama came in, um, and change things to race to the top. Um, at that point, I had uh, stepped away for a minute, moved to Florida with my husband to, he, he took a wonderful job there, came back, and I went to work for a school improvement company. Um, and they, the, I worked for them for about 18 months, and uh, that's when uh, Common Core came on, which was written by the governors. It wasn't a, it wasn't a national, national program it was a state pro uh, written by the state governors association and um a lot of people hated common core i'm not i'm not sure that i was a huge fan of most of it uh there were some good things there um but race to the top was different and it, it sure did allow some really good block grants in the states yeah. Um, I know the city that I live in in, in, in in Arkansas received a huge $25 million block grant um, from that um, and a uh, great program. And um, um, but my company got sold off not very long after because they were really, really entrenched and no child left behind. They weren't able to adapt fast enough. They got sold off. And um once they got sold off, I I was not there was they only had a few people that were actually employees. The rest were contracted people, um, and I was not one of the few that's that they kept on. They only kept on like five out of forty five, I think, and I was not. And those people were all in Jackson, Mississippi. I did not stay on, um, and I just my has my husband at that point was not doing very well and I just decided I am just not going to beat this stick anymore <laughs> and uh, said it's Indeed. too much I would have had to really probably go back to school and and get get brushed back up on on the new things going on yeah. anybody really else have anything going on in education in your countries in your state um that that you have questions thoughts uh insights parent parent involvement's everything my indeed, indeed well perhaps uh we could if you wish sage come back next week and talk some more same Love time it. different right. different topic we'll pick a different, oh, different topic, topic. yep yep absolutely we can talk about some different um so we'll be back next week um right and we nah. should give it we, we can do the advert now yeah. For Empire Empire Cred. Yeah, I I I, I think uh, I I have a, a, a thoughts on Common Core. I, you know, um, I learned how to unwrap it. I learned how to um, to help teachers build their curriculum around Common Core and how to teach it to their students. And um, it's hard. It was it, it 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 took a lot more thought because. Um, it wasn't anything out of a textbook. You had to really put a lot of thought into it. Um, there was some really, really good parts about it, David. Um, I think it really brought your your thought level way, way up. Um, but because of that, a lot of teachers didn't know what they were doing um a lot of schools went to block scheduling a lot of a lot of teachers freaked out and they threw some other things out in order to make time to to to, to um spend more time on those things um and 
kids came out not knowing how to write in cursive. So, I mean, they can't even read the Constitution. Um, right. Things like that. I mean, you know, there are documents out there and they're supposed to. One of the things they're supposed to be able to do is 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 go and look up documents and uh, from from old re th researching is, is, is part of what what, com what what was in Common Core. But yet they can't read in cursive. Um, they can't write in cursive. They can't read in cursive. Um, they're 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 in Common Core math. Um, I don't know what the heck that is. I don't know what they did with that, but um, I can't get from A to Z um, with whatever they're doing with that. Um, I know that there's been some maymays on uh, Facebook and everybody goes, what? And I'm kind of one of those people. I'm like, no, if you do it this way, it takes two steps. I, I don't know what they're teaching. So, in actual fact, uh, what you're calling common core maths is common in the UK as well. And I can't understand it. As you say, if you get 24 and 42, you add it up and it's 66. Yeah. That's it. What yeah. you don't need is a, a newfangled way to actually achieve the same end. If you've got. Just Especially when two, it takes 62 steps. Oh, that's it. That's it. I mean, OK, you might be trying to teach logic, but maths is maths. And it. Yeah, there's lots of ways to teach logic, and that's not it. No, no. Sometimes they make changes and don't improve things. No, it, exactly. That was not an improvement on anything except driving parents nuts because, you know, they also one of the things that came with Common Core is they really expected parents to be involved in working mm. with their kids at home. And all that did was make parents nuts. It, 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 it really did. And I think that was a bad, bad improvement. Um, I don't I don't think it improved anything. Um, and, and yeah, that 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 was no new map. But I do think that the United States needs to teach the metric system um, in math um, and not and get away from the old unit of math. I mean, we, we need to quit teaching pints and gallons when everybody else is teaching liters. Um, and same thing with miles versus, you know, kilometers. Whatever. Yep. Because I'm just confused all the time. I'm like, I don't know what the heck we just did. So, you know, and that's and, which is crazy. And I, I, I remember my last trip to Europe and I'm going, ah, how far did we just go? And why, <laughs> you know, it, it, and it's just a it, it to me, it's just a lack of education on my part. So, you know, yeah, yeah. So good question, David. Wonderful question. And, and um, I think there were some really good parts that's supposed to teach logic. And I suppose they're supposed to be teaching a lot of really great things. One of the things I liked were there were certain parts that were supposed to meet the needs of every single type of child. Um, one of the things that I really liked were there were projects. Um, and I know I was doing this. 15, 20, well, at the time, 15 years ago in my classroom, I would have projects with rubrics where every child was able to work at their own. I was at the project met the child where the child was. Mm -hmm. And so the child was able to be as successful as they possibly could be at their own level. And so they could get a really good score and do the very best they could at their level, no matter what, no matter if they were special ed, English students of other languages, if they were, no matter what, they could they could do well on a project. Um, and kids who were gifted mm -hmm. and talented, they could do well on the project. Um, and at a, they could work, they could go ahead and work ahead and work at higher levels, those sorts of things. Um, and I loved that for them. And we did that several times a year. Um, and and I, I think that those are the types of things that Common Core was meant to do. Um, I just don't think that all teachers were able to do it. Hmm. <sighs> That that that's that's uh, but on a good note, I, I, I'm just I just don't think all I think education for the most part 
it's to it, it's it's impossible to change every single school across the entire country that fast that much and you know like i said what goes around comes around goes around comes wow. around goes around comes around eventually it'll all come back around so it'll be okay it'll be okay in the end it'll but be okay in the end and somehow somehow everybody comes out okay in the end <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll work with it while it changes and then look forward to it getting stable at some point but they're always meddling with education Brexit and, uh, and and reality stars and now we've got somebody in Canada who's on Shark Tank running for prime minister. I don't know what all this is about other than, you know, name recognition is so huge. You you yeah. have to you have to wonder, you know, if if that doesn't and and celebrity doesn't somehow, you know, really entice people. Um well, the the thing is that the, we give power to celebrities that they don't have. They don't. We assume we assume that, that they know about things, but it's not necessarily true. They're just normal people who've been boosted. People can read a teleprompter. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. We could we could. Well, we may talk politics next week. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll be ready. I'm okay. so. I'm still, I'm still in shock after this last two weeks. So. Oh, right. Okay. And that, that, right. Okay. Right. And uh, all David's, our all our children will be educating. That's how, true. Right. Oh, how to sell Amway. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I get you. I, I understand what you're saying. I think one of our, one of our secretaries of something um, has Amway experience. And I think uh. our, I think, and our uh, new Secretary of Labor comes from. He was the chief executive, or or whatever, of Hardee's. Uh, they don't really believe in minimum wage increases. Oh right, okay. And, you know, we ha I mean, this is a very interesting new. A lot of people do not know who DeVos is. I I, I think if they didn't know who she was before. Four, they know who she is now, um, and it doesn't really matter if they knew um, who she was um, or if they even know who she is now because there was no way of defeating her. I'm two Republicans flipped and voted against her, and she still she still made it through. So. Um, it didn't really matter. Uh, and she not only was she worth billions, she gave billion. Uh, she gave um, huge donations to the Trump uh, campaign, as well as to, I think, 12 members of Congress. Um, huge donations. So um, I just um, we're just going to have to see what these billionaires do and all works out. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing their own game, and uh, we're somewhere on there. This, this same is true of the UK, where we do. Uh, have and I had somebody yesterday say, "I'm not European anymore. What am I, Britican? Am I a Marabrit?" Uh, <laughs> she was real cute. She didn't. She was like, "I'm not even a European anymore." No, uh, we're, well, we are. We're European for another two years. Well, no, yeah. that's. Uh, and I, I. Uh, Basically, talking of, of uh, things civic, I am chairman of the Twinning Committee. And the mm -hmm. Twinning Committee was formed 50 years ago uh, to join towns in England, Germany, and France. This was after the war, after the Second World War. And the idea was that if people got to know each other better, uh, right. then the world might be a safer place. And so every uh, couple of years, every Every three years, we visit France and Germany, and then they come over here. And the, the deal is that you you take your German guests and look after them for the weekend. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting conversation because among a lot of the liberal groups over here, they're, they're really struggling with the conversation of how do I talk to my friends who are Trump voters? Because right now there's so much anger. It is, um, yeah. And uh, I think that um, and, and this may be a really good topic to talk about and we can toss this out just a little bit. But um, 
I have noticed that if you start having conversations, what David said over here, a lot of people do not know who DeVos is. Mm. And the problem being that a lot of those people who voted, they just don't seem to know or have a depth of understanding. They say, we want the immigrants that are here. We want all the Mexicans to go back to Mexico, not understanding that they're not from Mexico, Mexico, um, build that wall. And, and, the, and, and Hispanic people are laughing going, so we'll just build a bigger ladder. Um, we'll fly know, over it. Yeah. We'll dig under it. We'll yeah. eat, take a boat. You know, I mean, your wall is we're, just going to cost you twenty I mean, million might, dollars. Yeah, they might even build it. Yeah, just labor. They might. They might engineer it. And it, never mind. I'm not. They're gonna talking go. about it. They're talking. I, I don't. I, no. I don't know. I think maybe there's there's a real good chance that um, in 2018 um, they're not going to have the same Congress. And All right. So you're gonna really look at having not having the same purse strings that you have now. Um, so you know, you, if you take away people's health care and you take away, you start talking about doing dumb things. Um, there will be there will be a, a shortage of ladders in Mexico. I doubt it. They're very, they're pretty resilient folk. And not only that, you start talking about the fact that there are people who have been here with legal papers in their hands who have been waiting, who have come here legally. And you know, they say they need to come here legally and do things legally. Uh, why don't they just follow the laws? Well, they've done that. And they're, they've been here 21 years still waiting on their papers to go through, waiting on their citizenship rights. They don't, you know, people. And when you start talking to people and people say, wait what and i say yeah they've actually been holding their papers waiting mm -hmm. for their number to be called so that they can get their citizenship yes and i go oh wait i don't understand and you start having so like you said getting to know your neighbors but if yeah. you start getting to really know and having these conversations with people so everybody's like oh i just quit talking to all the people who voted for trump well, if you start having, if you're able to have a no. civil conversation with these people that you have so little in common with, sometimes you can break down a barrier that they didn't know, they didn't know about. And all yep. of a sudden people start coming around the bend and go, oh my gosh, I had no idea. What can I do to help? Right. That's a great topic for next week's show. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I think so that's we'll a good one. All right. That. All right, let's do it. Sounds good. You want, say, you want to say thank you to everybody? Thank you very much, David, and all the and everyone who was there. Um, and why not build a wall in in the north and keep the Canadians out too? <laughs> well, you know, I if Trump keeps it up, he's gonna have a ball a wall around the entire country. And you know we're at, we're at war with Australia today, so go figure. Uh, uh, indeed, indeed, it gets more and more complicated as time goes on. Uh, but uh, thank you everybody for watching. All and right. Have a great day. Say tonight. Bye. Bye. We're going offline. It takes about fifteen seconds for it to go offline. And uh, Sage is gone. <laughs>